there's a saying out there that Randy Savage once said that Chief J. Strongbow had killed more young wrestlers' careers than drugs. <laughs> Can Mr. <laughs> Cornette comment <laughs> or share a story to back up this claim? Oh, God, I don't, well, when did Savage say it? Because it could have, it was 20 years ago, it could have been true at the time. Um, uh, the chief was, I don't know what the source of any heat with Chief J. Strongbow and Randy Savage there is. Do you know that, first of all, to prep the people before I give my response? I don't know if he was a part of the decision making not to include Angelo Poffo in that Legends Battle Royal, because that seems to be a lot of the source for heat from the Poffo family between them and various people in the WWF. I don't know if it's that, but I've heard, I'm sure you have a lot of guys. The, the guys who like Chief J. Strombo love Chief J. Strombo. The guys who didn't like him hated him. It, well, I just got to know the chief uh, over the first couple of years that I was there and the last couple of years that he was there. Right. So I know he'd been a big name and and actually he was a, a, a star in, in the South as Joe Scarpa for years before he got the Chief J. Strongbow gimmick. But that's what he made most of the money at. And he was perpetually Vince Senior's number two baby face. Uh, I did. I've seen some tape and didn't see the appeal, but it was a different world back then in the Northeast. However, Chief at the time that I got there was an agent and was just the grumpy frump. And I know people are going to say, oh, Cornette should have liked him because he was grumpy. No, I mean, grumpy funk, uh, grumpy frump sitting in the corner of the production meeting room after the meeting is broken up or whatever, not really wanting to go anywhere or do anything, having people brought to him blah, and just being blah, just blah. Um. I, you know, but Vince Jr., current day Vince, always liked Chief because obviously he was one of Vince Sr.'s guys and, and he was one of the lo ones that he was going to be loyal to till he retired. And then where Strongbow promptly popped up on a, when they finally parted ways uh, and Strongbow either retired or got fired or was let go, whatever the fuck, uh, he pops up on a WCW pay per view as a legend the year after. Remember that? Slamboree. Um, yeah, but anyway, um, he always liked it when Strongbow would say, oh, God, that match was so rotten, they could have had it in an iron lung. What I don't know. What, nobody even knew what that meant, but it was one of Vince's. It would always pop Vince. Um, so I just, he was just, he didn't go out of his way to, to praise anybody or work with anybody. He was generally backstage. He's like, that's how, uh, honestly, the Hardys got on uh, WWF TV through, Chief J. Strongbow being lazy because at that time they wanted the chief to bring in the TV guys. I did that job years later where that's where the, the Christopher Daniels is or the Adam Pierce is or the fucking or the Hardys again, uh, when they knew that they were over age this time, it, but I picked guys and put them on a list from each, uh, area and would call the guys individually that I thought were good enough in that territory to come and drive and be on a WWF show chief would find one guy that said, Hey, <laughs> can you get six guys and bring them whoever the fuck they are? Right. And chief would get apparently a certain, well, the guy that brought the, the guys would get the money from chief. And then of course he'd take a cut out and chief didn't basically have to do anything. And had never seen the fucking guys. That's why some of the, WWF TV guys, at least in early nineties were so rotten because they'd never been seen before. And they were just called, you know, in a group cattle call. But where I was going with that was the Italian stallion was his guy in the Carolinas and stallion got Matt and Jeff. And I don't know, but somehow they never, either they never asked or never asked for proof that they were 18 even they uh, filled out paperwork or whatever. So Jeff was on there when he was what, 16. They've, uh, they've, uh, they've, uh, they've acknowledged that now. Right. Or did I just break ground here? No, everyone knows that they were teenagers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was just it, the chief. He, he was kind of the, you know, the agent that sat around in the corner uh, and uh, they didn't give him matches per se at, at much at that point, but I can see probably a few years earlier, he was fucking making young guys probably want to cut their throats by being their agent. There was a story in Bret Hart's book that when he first got there in either 84, 85, I forget, 
uh, he was backstage and whatever. The guys having a friendly talk, and Brett made some sort of comment that you know, oh, if they if they pushed me like they pushed Hogan, I'd be over. You know, basically, if they give someone that push, it would. Make yeah, you'd almost have, you'd have to be a fucking corpse not to be over if, with that push. And then Jay Strongbow heard that and just started riling everyone up in the locker room. Like, you hear this guy? He thinks he's a bigger star than Hogan. You hear this guy? And Bret Hart said, like, uh, it, he hated it. It was like one of the worst things when he first got there. And I think he's one of those guys that did not like Jay Strongbow. But you brought up how over he was. You say he was the number two babyface in New York. That really doesn't even tell the true story just how over he was, especially in the early part of his run in New York before he got fat. He well, yeah. Super over. I mean, it's ridiculous. How did that happen? <laughs> because I don't, I don't call the promo or, or the, and I don't see the work. You want to know how it happened? It happened because Wahoo slapped Phil Zacco. That's why it happened. Well, I'm never, okay. <laughs> All right. We've, we've just done a deep cut for some of the newer Members, but basically they wanted to bring an Indian superstar into the Northeast, but Wahoo McDaniel, who was a preeminent one in the fucking business, had once upon a time slapped Baltimore promoter Phil Zacco, who was a co-owner of the company, uh, over a payoff resulting in them making an Italian guy an Indian for the first time ever. Uh, well, not for the first time ever, but th- that Chief J Strongbow didn't exist until Joe Scarpa went to the WWF and became Chief J Strongbow. Right? He'd never done it before. Correct. And, but they pushed him to the moon, uh, and you know they had a lot of a lot of talent and monopoly on the TV uh, at that point in time. So it, 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 that spot meant something. And to be honest, as big a fan of Wahoo as I am, style wise. It probably was the best fit. Jay Strong yeah, was a much better Wahoo fit. Wahoo would have slapped somebody named McMahon, probably. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he was going to do. A, I don't know if he was going to be a, a, a New York version of an Indian rather than a Carolina's version or a Texas version of an Indian. People forget uh, how big a star he was, too, is Joe Scarpa. He was one of the big stars in Buddy Fuller's crew, especially in Atlanta. I mean, a lot of those guys, unfortunately, people forget, like El Mongol, who were huge stars. But Joe Scarpa was already a huge star before he became Chief J. Strongbow, and then he was just super over. I mean, ridiculously over for a guy who just not my style of wrestling. <laughs> well, yeah, and I, would you say that in the 60s, Buddy Fuller, Joe Scarpa, El Mongol, and guy you may have to figure the assassins in as a tag team rather than a fourth guy were the 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 same level of stars that in then in seventies uh, uh or not Magnum but Mister Wrestling Two and Dusty Rhodes and uh you know who would have been at that level actually and said they were the really the 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 Mount Rushmore of Georgia wrestling in the sixties and all of a sudden. You know, Vince Senior just decides he wants goddamn Indian. So hey, Scarpa. <laughs> and he, I guess he had to learn how to do a war dance. Uh, maybe that was why it was. It, and nevertheless, 